In class activity two, for the following circuit, use the mesh current method to find the mesh currents and voltages across the 8 ohm and 6 ohm resistors. Compare your solution to the result of lecture 4-2 and in class activity two. What you should note here is that we're presenting analysis techniques and sometimes one is better than the other, but whether you choose mesh current or node voltage, you can actually get the same answers. And we will see that on this problem here. So first we're gonna label the three meshes. This is going to be I1, I2 and I3 and just as we did before we're going to label the polarities on the resistors with respect to I1 so the 2 ohm is positive on the left negative on the right the 8 ohm is positive on top negative on the bottom then for mesh I2 the 8 ohm is positive on the bottom negative on the top and the 6 ohm is positive on the top negative on the bottom then for mesh 3, the 2 ohm is positive on the right, negative on the left. The 4 ohm is positive on the left, negative on the right. Okay, now we are ready to write our three KVL equations. For mesh 1, we're going to have 2 times I1 minus I3 plus 8 times I1 minus I2 and that equals our voltage rise, which is 10. For mesh two, we're going to have six I2 plus eight times I2 minus I1 plus five. So plus five would equal negative five on the right side of the equal sign. Mesh three, starting with the two ohm resistor, we're going to have two times I3 minus I1 plus four times I3 equals five. So just as we did before, we're now going to make a three by four matrix where the rows are the three KVL equations and the columns are the coefficients on I1, I2, I3, and the constant on the right side of the equal sign. So the matrix is 10, negative eight, negative two, 10 for row one. For row two, it's negative eight, 14, 0, negative 5. And for row 3, it's negative 2, 0, 6, and positive 5. So then we use reduced row echelon form of that matrix, and we get that I1 is 1.5 amps. I2 is 0 0.7 amps, and I3 is 1.45 amps. So we will label these three currents on our circuit. So here we're going to have 1.85 amps, here we're going to have 0 0.7 amps, and here we're going to have 1.45 amps. Next, let's label our branch currents. So the branch current for the two ohm resistor, I have 1.85 coming into this node, but I have 1.45 leaving that node. So that gives me a net 0 0.4 amps pointing to the right through the two ohm resistor. Now for the eight ohm resistor, this bottom node, I have 1.85 leaving, I have 0.7 coming in, so I need 1.15 amps to come in. So that's 1.15 amps pointing down through the eight ohm resistor. The six ohm resistor, the mesh current is the branch current. So that current is 0 0.7 amps. For this five volt source here, at this node, I have 1.45 coming in, 0.7 going out. So I have an additional 0 0.75 amps going out to the left through the five volt source. For the four ohm resistor up here, the mesh current is the branch current, so that's 1.45 amps. And for this 10 volt source here, the mesh current is the branch current, so that's 1.85 amps. So now let's do voltages. And this is how we can confirm that this is the same answer we got when we did the node voltage method. The node voltage method, we know the node here is 10 volts. The node here would be V1, and the node here would be V2. So for V2, it would be 6 ohms times 0 0.7 amps, so positive on top, negative on the bottom, 
V2 is 4.2 volts, which should be the same as what we got before. For the 8 ohm resistor, V1 would be the voltage across the 8 ohm, so it's positive on top, negative on the bottom, 8 times 1.15, so before and now we're getting V1 is 9.2 volts. So now since we're going to obey, check that this obeys the law of conservation of energy, we'll go ahead and get the rest of the values as well. For the 2 ohm resistor, we have 0 0.4 amps pointing to the right, so that's positive on the left, minus on the right, 0 0.8 volts. And for the 4 ohm resistor, the current points to the right, so that's positive on the left, minus on the right, 4 times 1.45, so that voltage is 5.8 volts. And then, of course, for the 10 volt source, it's 10 volts, and for the 5 volt, 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 five volt source, it's 5 volts. So now let's make our table. We have element, voltage, current, and power. And we're going to have a 10 volt source, the 5 volt source, 2 ohms, 8 ohms. 6 ohms and 4 ohms. So the 10 volt source has 10 volts. The 5 volt source has 5 volts. The 10 volt source has 1.85 amps flowing through it from negative to positive, so it's delivering power and it's delivering negative 18.5 watts. The 5 volt source has 0 0.75 amps flowing through it and that's from negative to positive, so it's delivering also negative 3.75 watts. The 2 ohm resistor has a voltage of 0 0.8, a current of 0 0.4, and resistors always absorb power, so that is 0 0.32 watts absorbed. The 8 ohm resistor has 9.2 volts and 1.15 amps. It also absorbs power, and it absorbs 10.58 watts. The 6 ohm resistor has 4.2 volts, 0 0.7 amps, which is 2.94 watts absorbed. And finally, the 4 ohm resistor has 5.8 volts, 1.45 amps, and it absorbs 8.41. So when we sum that all up, we get zero, or that this obeys the law of conservation of energy. The total power delivered or developed in this circuit would be the sum of 18.5 plus 3.75, so the total power developed is 22.25 watts. In class activity three, for the following circuit, use the mesh current method to find the power developed in the dependent voltage source. Compare your to solution to lecture 4-3 and in class activity three. So as before, the first thing we're going to do is to label the three mesh currents, I1, I2, and I3. Then we're going to write the KVL equation for mesh 1, 15 I1 plus 30 times I1 minus I2 equals the voltage rise, which is 45. For mesh 2, we're going to have 30 times I2 minus I1 plus 20 I2 minus 5 V0 equals 0. Although this is a voltage rise, we're going to put it on the left side because it's a variable, V0. We have a dependent, a voltage-controlled voltage source here. So that's going to give us a constraint equation. So we're going to leave that like that. So for mesh 3, we're going to have 10 I3 plus 40 I3 plus 5 V0 equals 0. So now whenever you have a dependent source, you have a constraint equation. So that's the relationship between the controlling variable and the mesh currents, or the controlling variables and the node voltages in the case of the node voltage method. In this case, V0 is across the 20 ohm resistor. So V0 is equal to the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor, or 20 I2. So this time, our matrix is going to have four rows, two, three, four, for the four equations, and five columns, I1, I2, I3, V0, and the constant. So 
Row one is 45 minus 30, 0, 0, 45. Row two is minus 30, 50, 0, negative 5, 0. Row three is 0, 0, 50, 5, 0. And row four is 0, negative 30, 0, 1, 0. So then when we solve this system of equations, we get I1 is 833 milliamps. I2 is negative 250 milliamps. I3 is 750 milliamps. And V0 is negative 7.5 volts. So we're going to label these values on our circuit. So here we'll have 833 milliamps. Here we're going to have negative 250 milliamps. And here we'll have 750 milliamps. So now let's look at some of our branch currents. The branch current for the 30 ohm resistor would be, we have a net 833 milliamps going down this direction. Now, since this is negative 250, that means although it looks like it's drawn to go into this node, it's really leaving this node. So I have 833 milli leaving to the left, 250 milli leaving to the right. So that gives me a net 1.0833 amps flowing down through the 30 ohm resistor. Similarly, for the 5V naught dependent source, at this node here, I have 250 milliamps coming in from the right, from the left, 750 milliamps coming in from the right. So that gives me a net one amp up through that dependent source. But let's talk about the dependent source. We found that V naught was equal to negative 7.5 volts which makes sense here because we have a negative 250 milliamps flowing in from the left. So what that means is that although 5V naught is drawn to be positive on the bottom, negative on the top, the actual voltage is positive on the top, negative on the bottom, and it has a value of 5 times 7.5, so it is 37.5 volts. So what this shows us is that both of our sources are actually delivering power. The 45 volts power is 45 times 833 milliamps, and the dependent source's power is 37.5 times one. So now let's make a table so that we can show that this circuit obeys the law of conservation of energy. Now, I'm done finding branch currents because the rest of the currents are actually mesh currents, right? So the 15 ohm has 833 milliamps, the 20 ohm has 250 milliamps, and the 10 and 40 both have 750 milliamps. So here are my columns, element, voltage, current, and power in watts. So the elements are 45 volts, 5V naught, 15 ohms, 30 ohms, 20 ohms, 10 ohms, and 40 ohms. So the 45 volts and the 5V naught, we just found their voltages. So the 45 volts has a current of 0 0.833. The 5V naught has a current of one. So they both deliver 37.5 watts. The 15 ohm resistor has a current of 0 0.833 and a voltage of 12.5. So it has a power of 10.412. There is a little rounding. I'm going to three decimal places when necessary though. The current for the 30 ohm is 1.0833. The voltage is 32.5 and the power is 35.206. The 20 ohm has a current of 0 0.25, a voltage 
of 5 and a power of 1.25. The 10 ohm has a current of 0 0.75, a voltage of 7.5 and a power of 5.625. And finally, the 40 ohm has a current of 0 0.75, a voltage of 30 and a power of 22.5. And when you sum that all up, it does equal to zero. So this shows that the circuit does obey the law of conservation of energy. And the total power delivered or developed in the circuit is 37.5 times two or 75 watts. And this concludes today's lecture on the mesh current method. Have a great day.